Well, hi there, it's Sandy Alnock, and I'm here with Create in Color once again. It is World Watercolor Month. So I'm going to watercolor, but I'm also going to give you a color lesson. So I hope you're ready to go to school. I'm going to be using these cute stamps in the selfie series from MFT. I'm using them because they've got these nice wide open images. And for watercolor, unless you're doing really loose watercolor, it's nice to have open areas to paint so that you don't have to have super tiny brushes. And I've got a color wheel and on one side it's all about mixing, but the other side is all about color combinations and split complementaries is what I'm going to use today. A, a direct complementary has something like a blue green on one side. The direct opposite is a red orange, but you can use red and orange as the split complementaries. You go for the color on either side of the complementary color and a yellow green has a red violet opposite it, but a red and a violet can also be used. So it gives you an option for two other colors rather than just using two colors in a regular complementary. Blue violet goes out to yellow and orange instead of a yellow orange. So I'm going to paint each one of these in one of those three colorways that I chose and kind of show you how it works and talk through a little bit of this. A complementary or a split complementary gives you the feeling of using a lot of colors even when you don't use a lot of colors. So on this one I've got a blue violet color and I decided after painting part of the, the little uh, baboon, gorilla, whatever he is, I decided I wanted to paint him in two shades of it. Just because you've chosen blue violet doesn't mean you only have one blue violet to use. So I mixed in more purple and more blue to make a darker color use a little bit thicker paint and then I'm going to use my yellow and my orange. The orange is going to be a, a small accent and the yellow, New Gamboge, is going to be the big background color. And you can see that it feels very colorful. It feels very strong and like it's got a party atmosphere to it, but I haven't used a dozen colors to try to get there. Sometimes we overuse colors. We just choose too many, but the Complementaries and split complementaries are a way to achieve that without getting sort of a cacophonous look to your artwork. So this one is going to be the yellow green combination and I'm having to mix a yellow green because I have sap green and I have nickel azo. The two of those together make a nice yellow green rather than a straight up green. And I'm going to use the yellow green for the background here and the violet and the red for the smaller accent pieces. And again, it's going to feel like it's got a lot of color in it. Look at the difference between this violet and the blue violet up above. The baboon or gorilla or whatever he is, he was painted in a blue violet. This one is the straight imperial purple that's in my palette. So it's got a different flavor to it. But when you put some yellow, green, and violet and red together, it feels like a party image. It feels like it's got a lot of colors in it. It's kind of fun to be able to play with colors in this way and get some new color combinations out there too because otherwise we just use the same stuff all the time. So with this guy I added some shading with a, a heavier coat of that purple so I could get some difference in that. So this last combination is going to be the blue green with the orange and the red. And this one is gonna be really festive for these birds. It was hard trying to come up with which parts were going to be which colors. So I was trying to think about how to draw attention to their faces. And I knew I wanted to have a, a yellowish color on their main part of their beaks. So I watered down the orange so I could have a thin orange coat that I'll add a sh shadow to later. And the background, I wanted it to be red, but I didn't want it to be intense red because I wanted the intensity to be in the birds. And I put some thicker red paint in the mouths and then thicker red paint on their bodies and just started building from there. I was then left with what to do with the rest of their, their heads. And I put a little bit of the orange in the areas surrounding the beak and the bottom of the beak and you know dropped a little bit more of that color in the hat. The last choice I made was to add some blue and make my blue-green a darker blue green than the other blue green because like I said you don't have to be limited just to that one blue green but it keeps it all in that same color family and gives me some real variety as well in the color 
It still feels very festive. It still feels bright and happy and cheerful because the colors come from the opposite end of the whole color wheel. So they have that feel to them. However, there's something to be aware of with complements and split complements, which is that they neutralize each other. If you're ever trying to dull down a color for one reason or another, then you can mix the complement with it. If you need to make a gray, you don't have a gray in your palette, or you want to make a brown because you don't have the right brown, mix complements together. Well, when I wanted to do a little kind of crazy, wild, loose background with spatters, I ran into a bit of pro problem with it. And this is my first attempt. I was like, oh yeah, this will be great. And I forgot until I did this that these are going to make a neutral. And when I dropped the colors into each other, the orange and the red started mixing with that blue-green and turning into a weird poopy brown color. Now you didn't see any of that happen when I painted the little image because I didn't mix any of the colors together. They're great next to each other, but when they're together, they start making weird brown things and neutralizing each other. And when you put the image itself on top of it, you can see the difference in the color. So I wanted something brighter. Well, how do you do that when you want something bright and you want it to be in the same colors? Well, let's take a look. You can take the main color that you're going to be painting with. And in this case, remember, it was the blue-green that I pointed the arrow to. The other two are the split complements for the blue-green. So I'm going to do my splatter first in the blue-green. I'm going to put a little bit of water on it and spray it and spritz it and move the color around and get that the way that I want it. And I can use a baby wipe to dab some off and spread some color around, etc. And then dry it completely before starting to put some of the other colors on it. The reason that you want to do that is because when you put the other colors on it, you're going to have more control over what happens to those colors. Because I can do my spattering and, you know, put those colors down and, and let them kind of trail around all over the card front. And when I start doing my spritzing with water and start spreading around some of that color, I don't have to fight all of the blue green that's under there. A little bit of it will lift, but most of it is going to stay put, which means you're going to have a lot more control over where exactly that color is, and you can lift it if it looks like it's going to create any neutrals by layering. So I did the same thing with each one of these. The main color I spattered first, let it dry, and then added the other colors to it. So I had a loose element for each one of my cards in addition to the little square images that are mounted onto some black cardstock. And I used some black card bases, stamped my sentiment, and now I have a great set of fun birthday cards in bright colors that are not a normal combination. So I hope that you might have been inspired to try a new combination yourself. I will have a link to a color wheel online over on the blog post if you need that, and I will see you again next month. Bye-bye.